time. Many believe that it is, in fact, a one-way street. A forward march from the past, through the present, and into the future. But what if that's not the whole story? What if events in the future could influence the past? Sounds like science fiction, right? Welcome to the mind-bending world of retrocausality. Retrocausality colloquially means backward causation and refers to the notion that the future can possibly affect the past. This, in the realm of physics, constitutes something of a challenge to time and causality in its very essence. But this isn't merely a thought experiment. Scientists entertain the possibility that retrocausality might be quite real, especially in the quantum world. But first, let me build a somewhat living bridge toward that world. Classical causality holds that every cause should have an effect, and such an effect follows a cause. In physics, this is related to the idea of the arrow of time, a concept introduced to debate by Arthur Eddington in 1927. Time is said to flow in the direction in which things can be done, or water flows from the top to the bottom, taking everything down with it. We can memorize the past, but not the future. Partly this is because of the second law of thermodynamics, which tells us that in any closed system, entropy or disorder is bound to rise over time. It explains why things ultimately decay and why an egg can't be unscrambled. The increased entropy defines the arrow of time, thereby enforcing our context of cause and effect. Two of the most baffling aspects of quantum physics, namely time and causality, do not seem to hold any more as they do in the case of subatomic particles. In the early 1800s, a physicist named Thomas Young first performed a famous experiment called the double slit experiment. And in it, he discovered that light actually shows dual nature. In this experiment, they passed a light beam through two slits and observed an interference pattern on the screen placed behind those slits. They concluded that light is made up of particles, but those particles travel in the form of a wave. In 1924, physicist Louis de Broglie proved that not just light, but all particles, whether they are electrons, quarks, or bosons, also show wave-like behavior. Later, Niels Bohr proved mathematically that the interference pattern seen in the double-slit experiment due to the wave nature of the particle is true, but if you detect the particle before it reaches the screen, then instead of the interference pattern, you will see a dotted pattern on the screen, as if the particles have left their wave nature and taken a definite form. Albert Einstein, Nathan Rosen, and Boris Podolsky discovered a paradox famously called the EPR paradox, which introduced a major flaw in Bohr's theory. They essentially conducted a thought experiment and proposed that if there is a source particle that doesn't spin, and it transforms into two new particles that do spin, then, according to the principle of conservation of angular momentum, both particles will have to show equal and opposite spins so that the total spin cancels out, matching that of their parent particle. According to Einstein, if we keep these two particles light years apart, then even if both exist as a wave of multiple possibilities, observing one should instantly determine the spin of the other. Otherwise, the law of conservation of momentum would break. On top of that, if we say that the observed particle can inform the other about its spin, then this information would have to travel faster than the speed of light to reach the other particle. When we actually jump into this weird world of quantum, things get much weirder. John Archibald Wheeler proposed the concept that future events have the power to affect the past. And this idea was demonstrated through the delayed choice quantum eraser experiment. At that time, no theory could explain this observation. In a simple double slit experiment, you first place two thin slits in front of a light beam, so that the photons of light have to choose which path they take. When the photons have to choose a path between the two slits, they show their strange behavior and pass through both slits in the form of a wave at the same time. But if a detector tracks the path of a photon, the photon takes the form of a particle due to interacting with the detector, 
and its wave function collapses. This interaction causes a dotted non-interference pattern to appear on the screen due to quantum decoherence. The process by which a quantum system loses its quantum properties and behaves more classically due to interactions with its environment. However, if there is no detector to track the photon's path, it will show an interference pattern and its waveform will be maintained. John Wheeler later placed a beta barium borate crystal in front of the two slits, which splits a photon into a pair of quantum entangled photons. Now, if there is a detector, let's call it detector 1, and additional detectors, say detector 2, 3, and 4, then a quantum entangled counterpart of every photon reaching detector 1 will reach the other detectors as well. This is important because if we see a certain pattern on detectors 2, 3, or 4, we should see the same pattern on detector 1, since they are quantum entangled pairs. In this setup, detectors 1 and 4 were arranged so that photons from both slits reached them in a combined manner, making it impossible to determine which photon came from which slit. This lack of path information results in an interference pattern. On the other hand, Detectors 2 and 3 were set up so that photons from slit 1 went directly to detector 2 and photons from slit 2 went directly to detector 3. As a result, detectors 2 and 3 could easily identify the path of the photons reaching them, showing a non-interference particle pattern. Now, here's a thought-provoking question. Detector 1 shows a wave interference pattern like detector 4. But when detectors 2 and 3 are observed where we know the path information, should detector 1 instantly start showing a particle pattern because detector 2 and 3 know the path information? Logically, one might think that since the photons are quantum entangled, detector 1 should change its wave pattern to a particle pattern. But Wheeler added a twist. He placed detector 1 closer to the slits than the other three detectors, meaning the photons would reach it first before reaching the others, and so irrespective of detectors two and three knowing the path of the photons reaching them, detector one has already made its decision, and it cannot change it, right? Surprisingly, as soon as a particle pattern appears on detectors two and three, detector one also shows the same pattern. This suggests that the information about the photons detected on detectors 2 and 3 somehow travels back in time to the point where the photons were split into quantum entangled pairs, influencing detector 1 to show the same pattern. Essentially, information travels from the future to the past, affecting past decisions, an observation where the effect precedes the cause. This groundbreaking experiment challenges our understanding of the world. However, it overlooks two fundamental flaws consistent with the Copenhagen interpretation of quantum physics. First, in this experiment, as soon as a photon passes through the BBO crystal, it splits into two quantum entangled particles with equal but lesser energy. While this isn't unusual, the slit is present before the BBO crystal. This means that as soon as the photon interacts with the crystal, its wave function collapses due to quantum decoherence. Therefore, a non-interference particle pattern will always appear on every detector. The second flaw arises from biased sampling. Actually, some physicists says that in this experiment, the photons of slit 1 detects on detector 2 and photons of slit 2 detects on detector 3. And because of this known path information, their wave function collapses and they show their non-interference particle pattern in both their respective detectors plus on detector 1. But actually there's always a non-interference pattern on every detector and we will see that how. If we want to compare the observation of detector 2 with detector 1, where by the way photons from both the slits are reaching, then obviously we have to compare the photons pattern on detector 2 with the photons pattern on detector 1 reaching from only slit 1. But if we are ignoring the photons of slit 2 just to match the pattern, then this becomes the biased sampling. So to verify this confusion, 
Some physicists carefully studied the observations of the quantum eraser experiment, and they found out that if you place the observations of detector 2 and detector 3 on top of each other, then the same interference pattern is formed as that on detector 1 and 4 without the biased sampling. This means that on detector 1 and 4 we were getting non-interference particle pattern only the whole time, but because they were coming from both the slits, they looked like interference pattern in their merged form. In a way, we can say that the same non-interference pattern is being formed on all the four detectors right from the beginning. It's just that on detector 1 and 4 patterns were merged from both the slits, and that tricked us to interpret it as interference pattern. But then, there are other phenomena in quantum mechanics where it goes on to show that perhaps reality doesn't follow our folk expectations. Is it possible for future events to influence what we see as the past? In time travel, retrocausality in many works of literature seems to signify traveling into the past. Generally, in movies, time traveling consists of physically traveling backward by the protagonist and changing the past. But retrocausality is not about DeLoreans or wormholes. It states that the future influences the past without violating any principles of physics. Some physicists, such as Kip Thorne, have put forward the proposal of so-called closed time-like curves, basically loops in time allowing events to influence themselves. Retrocausality would be expected, assuming such curves exist. In some closed time-like curves, information from the future would travel back in time to change past events instead of creating paradoxes. According to general relativity, these time loops are theoretically possible, and a few believe retrocausality might be an extension of quantum mechanics in the macroscopic world. Next to the transactional interpretation of quantum mechanics, probably one of the more interesting retrocausalist theories to be offered is that of John Kramer, himself a physicist, which Kramer proposed in 1986. The transactional interpretation describes quantum events as a kind of handshake across time when quantum particles exchange offer waves, moving forward in time with predicting probabilistic amplitudes and confirmation waves moving backward in time with standard conduction probabilities. That handshake represents a sort of self-consistent loop, whereby what happens at the quantum level might be influenced by events that have not yet occurred, but are expected to happen. What position would it take within our understanding? Would future actions influence present or past ones? Such an idea may very well seem nebulous, but there exists the possibility of scientists shedding light on how retrocausal effects may find footing in practical applications. Whereas quantum cognition factors in and hints that perhaps human choices will entail retrocausalities, others suggest the prospect of consciousness involving the brain operating on quantum equations instead of classical ones. And it is incredibly curious that our current decisions may perhaps be influenced by events in the future in ways undetectable and fine. The notion of being able to influence the past from the future is still a mystery for now. Is it because our understanding of time is necessarily unfinished? Or are we thereby edging towards a fundamental malfunction in our insight into reality? The next few decades promise to be exciting for researchers studying retrocausality. Quantum computing and other more precise experiments in quantum mechanics could help us discover sooner if future influences indeed point into the past. If the future can invoke influence into the past, it would shatter everything human beings take for granted about the universe. Also, it might lead to a whole redefinition of our conception of time, causality, and perhaps free will itself. Undoubtedly, the more things appear sensible and taken for granted, the stranger the universe seems.